Hello and welcome to the Masana YouTube channel. Today's video is Radiant Cooling 101. I changed the lighting. We are now at a cool blue. Uh, but yeah, today I hope to give you all the information you need regarding Radiant Cooling uh, to hopefully educate you as an architect, a builder, uh, an engineer, an installer, or even just a curious homeowner who is interested in hydronic radiant cooling systems. You might be wondering who we are. We are Masana Hydronic Technologies, but we were actually known as Masana Radiant Cooling before. Uh, we started with radiant cooling in Europe. We did experiments in the floor to provide radiant cooling via the floor, but we found those systems are really high in mass, so they don't respond very quickly, which is critical when it comes to battling the dew point and condensation in a radiant cooling system. So we'll move the technology to the ceiling, and throughout Europe, hydronics is already widely accepted. Radiant ceiling heating and cooling is already accepted. So our co-founders came over from Italy, adapted the product to the U.S. building standards, um, and have since grown radiant cooling throughout the United States. And so we've done a good amount of projects all over the U.S., particularly high-end residential, some commercial stuff. We have various products that fit various needs, but we've really been the radiant cooling pioneers here in the U.S. And so since pioneering radiant cooling and bringing it to the U.S., we've continued to upgrade our controls, which are the boxes you see behind me. And so now our controls can manage other hydronic terminals. We are not just for radiant cooling and heating. We can also manage hydronic fan coils, HRV, ERV units, our own air treatment units, domestic hot water. So we really provide this nice overarching control system for a hydronic HVAC system. Um, so we are now Misana Hydronic Technologies. I'm Saul. I've been here for about three years. So I've spent the last three years learning about hydronics in the HVAC industry in general. I've actually been to the last three AHR expos, and that is the HVAC trade show that happens every year in about, I think in February uh, in Las Vegas. And those are really great. The first year I was there, we only saw one or two companies bring an air to water heat pump to show off, which is a good energy source for hydronic systems. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. But the last year I went this year uh, in February, most of these big name manufacturers do have the air to water heat pump uh, for hydronic systems. And they're showing them off in the US finally. Hydronics refers to the use of water to transfer thermal energy. Uh, and so all these systems use water. So we run water throughout your floor and a radiant floor, throughout a ceiling and a radiant ceiling, or two hydronic fan coils if you have a hydronic fan coil system. So in today's video, we're just going to jump more into radiant cooling, which is hydronic. Uh, you cannot do electric radiant cooling. There is electric radiant heating where you have a heating element that heats up and that can be used, you know, under floors, in towel warmers. There's various applications for that, but they're nowhere near as efficient as their hydronic counterparts. And so for the structure of today's video, I just want to go into the science of radiant cooling, give you some definitions so you understand what's really going on. Then we'll get into the feeling so you understand how a radiant cooling system would feel compared to a forest air system and then the components of a hydronic radiant cooling system, and then lastly, the benefits of going radiant. So regarding the science, I just want to provide you a nice simple definition of radiant cooling. And so radiant cooling is an energy efficient cooling technology that unlike traditional forest air systems that cool air and dump it into a space, we employ a chilled radiant surface, which extracts heat from the space. So heat only moves from hot to cold. That's something you should remember. It's one of the laws of thermodynamics. So heat only flows from hot bodies to cooler bodies. So if you have a chilled surface, what's really going on is heat is moving from your environment to that chilled surface, and that leaves the environment cooler. So radiant cooling is actually a method of heat extraction. So it's pulling heat from the environment to leave it cooler, leave occupants feeling cooler. And so that's the first thing you're really want to, gonna wanna know is heat only moves from hot to cold. So you cannot really radiate cooling, you're really absorbing thermal energy. So keep that in mind. Um, it's also worth noting that defining cold is not as straightforward as defining heat. Unlike heat or thermal energy, which we define as kinetic energy arising from the vibration of particles of matter, cold doesn't have the same direct physical counterpart. Instead, we perceive cold as the absence of heat, and so it is kind of like a negative heat. It's also really interesting how our skin receptors feel heat or cooling. So we have heat receptors called Ruffini endings that are sensitive to warmth, and for cooling, we have the end bulbs of the Krauss in our skin, and those are sensitive to cold. That's just a little fun fact for you there. Now, you might be wondering why we would even use water instead of, you know, forest air systems, especially since forest air systems have been dominant in the U.S. Uh, for as long as I can remember. And it really comes down to the ability to store more thermal energy. So water has four times the heat capacity of air. So that makes it really efficient for transporting thermal energy. But it is also easier to transport the um, water compared to air. And so it is easier to pump water throughout a building than it is air. And also less energy is lost, you know, for example, like in the ductwork of a forest air system, you're losing energy. There could be some leaks and stuff like that. Whereas the pre-insulated PEX half inch piping that runs throughout your home for a hydronic system is going to experience much less energy loss. Now, those are some of the reasons why we would choose a hydronic system over a forest air system. And there are more, but we'll get into those when it comes down to the benefits of a radiant system. 
It's also worth remembering that heat only moves from hot to cold via three fundamental mechanisms and only three. So first you have conduction, which involves the direct contact between objects to transfer thermal energy. Then there's convection, which pertains to the movement of heat through air or liquid. Um, and convection is the reason you see hot air rising and cold air sinking. And then it, the last way is radiation, and that's what we're talking about here today. Uh, radiation means there's no contact. It is solely radiant. It refers to the tra transmission of heat via electromagnetic waves, um, and so that is what a radiant system does. When I talk about the feeling of radiant cooling, my favorite comparison is a parking garage. You know, you're walking in, you know, hot downtown cement streets. It's really hot. There's a lot of concrete, not many trees. Uh, but it's a hot day, but then you walk into the parking garage that you parked in and you instantly feel cooler. And that is a sensation of thermal energy and being pulled from your body by those cold parking garage walls. The same would apply for like a cave where it's a lot of rock that is really cold. It's going to be cold in there because those cold walls are pulling thermal energy away from your body, giving you that cooling sensation. Now, a more straightforward comparison that I've heard is uh, the freezer aisle of a supermarket. And that makes a ton of sense. Obviously, it's really cold in those freezers. And so the walls of those freezers, the doors are going to be very cold as well. And so that becomes a radiant surface. Those freezer walls are pulling thermal energy away from your body. And that is why you feel so much cooler when you walk down that aisle. Now, if you were to open one of those doors and the air flows out, that is air that is then cooling you. That is not what we're talking about. But if you walk down that aisle while the doors are shut, that is radiant cooling in action. And so now let's jump into the components of a hydronic system. Here at Masana, we've pioneered controls, sensors, air units, um, and of course, our radiant ceiling panels. But that is not all that goes into a radiant system. See, a radiant system needs an energy source, and that is what generates hot or cold water for heating or cooling. And so when you have a heating only system, you really only need like a boiler to generate hot water. But when you do heating and cooling, ideally you have a unit that can provide hot and cold water, and that would be an air to water heat pump, like I mentioned earlier. And those are highly efficient and can also use renewable energy sources, which is great. There's air to water heat pumps. There's also geothermal heat pumps. Um, but either way, you're using those to generate hot or cold water. And those are what we call the energy source because those are generating the hot or cold water, those are heating up or cooling down that water. But from there, where does it go? You'll be using pumps, uh, buffer tanks, valves, and manifolds to push that water throughout your home to provide heating or cooling. And so typically there's a mechanical room in these projects, uh, it's a dedicated mechanical space. And so you'll have all these pumps that push the water throughout the system. Then you have valves which can adjust the radiant surface temperature or the supply water temperature to the system. It doesn't have to be radiant, but valves can make adjustments there. Um, then you'll have manifolds as well. And manifolds are what control the zoning of a home. And so typically we'll have each zone on its own manifold loop and you can open or close these actuators on the manifold to open or close the loop uh, for a particular zone. So you can choose when and where you're delivering heating or cooling. And uh, so that's another benefit of a hydronic system is you can really choose where you're sending the heating or cooling at any given time. Additionally, you can incorporate dehumidifiers. Those are really good and a big friend to radiant cooling systems because radiant cooling is a battle between the radiant surface temperature and the dew point temperature. If the radiant surface temperature falls below the dew point, condensation is going to form just like it does on the outside of a cold glass. And when we're providing radiant cooling, we need to avoid that. We can't have water forming on the ceiling or floors. Uh, and so that's why you use intelligent sensors, which are another co um, component of a hydronic system. So that's what you see behind me. This is the history of Masana sensors. And then these are the controls we have. And so those sensors monitor the dew point, that point at which condensation would form. And then our controls can use those mixing valves to adjust the radiant surface temperature to make sure we avoid condensation. But our controls can also activate forms of dehumidification too, which would lower that dew point, allowing us to use cooler water in the radiant system, increasing cooling output. And so just to kind of summarize, first we have the energy source and, you know, I say first, but this is actually a loop system. So that water is flowing continuously throughout the system. It, there is no end. You're also not pulling more, like you're not increasing your water bill by having a hydronic system. It's a closed loop. So there's a fixed amount of water. And also if you have a leak, it's a closed loop. So it's not going to endlessly leak water. Um, although that's not really a concern, but that's a conversation for another video. But we have the energy source generating the heated or chilled water. Then we have all the mechanical equipment, which is focused on getting the hot or cold water to the delivery terminal. And that delivery terminal would be a radiant floor or a radiant ceiling panel system or hydronic fan cools. And that delivery terminal is what's really delivering that heating or cooling. And then lastly, let's just jump into the benefits of a hydronic radiant system. First, we have efficiency. It is much easier to transport water than it is air. It's easier to move it throughout the space. You also lose less energy. Uh, and then you can use sustainable or renewable energy sources. So on the sustainable side, 
devices like air to water heat pumps are highly sustainable, highly efficient. Um, there's a term that's coefficient of performance and that reflects the efficiency. And so basically for every one unit of electrical energy input, how many units of heat energy do you get out? And so for every one unit with an air to water heat pump, you're getting anywhere from two to five units of heat energy out. So you're getting a positive return on your investment. Whereas when it comes to like a gas furnace, for example, you're putting in one unit of electrical energy, but you're only getting out like 0.95 um, units of heat energy out. So it's not efficient. You're not getting a positive return. Um, and so that's why air to water heat pumps, geothermal heat pumps um, are so critical when it comes to saving energy. And then it comes down to the renewable side where those air to water heat pumps are electric. So you can use solar panels to power those air to water heat pumps. And then all of a sudden you're providing heating or cooling from solar. And so that's great. You can use sustainable or renewable energy sources. And then lastly, the global warming potential of hydronic systems is less. A uh, pretty common system you're seeing nowadays are mini split systems where you have an outdoor unit and then refrigerant lines running to an indoor unit. So that refrigerant is what delivers the heating or cooling. It's what's transporting uh, it's the hot or cold refrigerant. But refrigerant is toxic. It's not something you necessarily want inside your home. So a hydronic system has a small amount of refrigerant in the outdoor unit, uh, which is used to help heat or cool water. But in terms of what's running inside the home, it's just the hydronic piping. It's just the water lines. Sometimes it's a water glycol mix in like really cold climates, but you're not introducing that refrigerant into your environment. And then also GWP refers to the global warming potential. And so all refrigerant is going to end up released to the atmosphere at some point in time. And so because we're using so much less, it is better for the environment uh, using like an air to water heat pump than one of those like mini split systems, which have much more refrigerant that is going to eventually be released to the environment. Then it comes down to comfort, and I probably should have led with that because comfort is uh, one of the main benefits of a radiant system. Radiant systems are already regarded as the most comfortable way to heat or cool a space, and that is because it provides an even level of silent and invisible comfort. You're covering your whole ceiling, uh, depending on loads, but you're really getting an even level of comfort compared to a forced air system where you're jumping in air from one location. You might have hot spots or cold spots, and it's just not as comfortable um, and so radiance, the way to go there. And also they allow for ideal zoning. So you can make sure you're delivering that thermal comfort when and where you need it. Um, and so that increases efficiency as well as comfort in general. And then the design side of things, since we are only running this pre-insulated half inch PEX piping throughout your home, we don't need as much bulky ductwork. And so architects love hydronics. Um, these systems are also future proof. You know, you put this infrastructure in your house and sure there might be changes in heat pump technology or pumps or things regarding your mechanical components, uh, but you could upgrade those over time. But the hydronic delivery terminal will stay the same and you can use it for years to come. And so although there might be a higher initial investment cost when it comes to hydronic systems, you do get a longer lifespan since you're just using water throughout the system. It's not as corrosive uh, and they require less maintenance. And so there are some benefits uh, on the design side, on the comfort side, on the efficiency side. Um, and so it really is the way to go if you're trying to work on a nice high performance home. And so that's about everything I wanted to talk about today regarding radiant cooling. If there's something I missed, definitely let me know in the comments and I'll probably go ahead and make another video regarding this. Uh, and also if you have any questions, let me know too. If you're interested in a Masana system, we have a nice get started tab on our website where you can go ahead and request a free estimate. Uh, it'll either give you an estimate or put you in contact with some of our hydronics experts to go over your project in a little more detail. Uh, but it's a good way to see what your project might entail. Thank you for watching today. As always, I hope you learned something. Take care.